Welcome to Auto Monday App, the weekly car news and review show where this week we have an all-new electric car from Audi, the Tesla rivaling e-tron GT. We also have an enormous luxury SUV from Maybach as well as a new special edition hot hat from Abarth. The Toyota Corolla takes on rivals from Honda and Hyundai and a digital concept car is brought to life by Mini. That's all coming up. First, though, the news. A few weeks ago, Lamborghini revealed its final iteration of the Aventador. Called the 784 Ultime, it marks the end of Aventador production of 10 years as the brand's flagship model. And with restrictive legislature and electrification in full force, we assumed that the 769 brake horsepower Ultime would be the last of the V12 Lambos. However, in a recent interview with Autoblog, Lamborghini CEO Stefan Winkelmann has confirmed that the Aventador's replacement will have an all-new naturally aspirated V12 engine, combined with a hybrid system, although not the same one we've seen in the Sian. The new flagship Lamborghini is expected in 2023 as part of a new hybrid model range. The Abarth 595 has been with us for ages now. First released in the late 2000s as the Abarth 500, it's a loud, fast and fun hot hatch that's always put B-Road blasting over brand hatch lap times. There have been various different versions and special editions over the years, and now there's yet another one. It's called the F595 and it's been built to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the brand's founder, Carlo Abarth's Formula Italia race car. And it isn't just the past this car is celebrating, as it also showcases Abarth's current connections to Formula 4. Since 2014, Formula 4 cars in Italy and Germany have used the turbocharged 1.4-litre engines from the Abarth 595, although they don't produce as much power as they do in this new special edition. It has the same power output as the current 595 Turismo model at 163 brake horsepower and is good for 0-62 in 7.3 seconds, putting it somewhere in the middle of the 595 range in terms of performance. SS and Competizione models are still quicker, but the F595 does get some unique features. Perhaps the most obvious and eye-catching detail is the new stacked exhaust. Unique to this model, the record Monza Sovraposto is a fresh take on the legendary Monza exhaust that has been an Abarth staple for decades. There's a bespoke range of colour options, each accompanied by some Morale blue trim details and some unique F595 badging. Pretty much all of the optional kit from regular Abarths is thrown in, as are some rather retro petal alloy wheels that were introduced with the 500 when the brand was revived in 2008. Prices start at just over £20,000, rising to £24,000 for an automatic convertible version. As much as we love these riotous little machines, the 595 is getting on a bit and we're itching to see what the new Fiat 500 electric will be like with more power and some Scorpion badges. The new Mini lineup has remained fairly consistent for a while now. With the word Paceman and two-seater models now thankfully consigned to the history books, it seems that Mini's designers have been feeling the itch to get creative again. Early this year they showed us a so-called digital vehicle vision called the Urbanaut. Looking more like a van than a traditional Mini, this living room on wheels is what the brand calls an enabler of and companion for unforgettable times. It was a fun digitally animated render of a car we thought we'd never see nor hear of again. Now though they've actually built one. 
At just under four and a half metres long, the Vision Urbanaut is a spacious living room on wheels for a future where cars drive themselves. It's easy to be cynical about left field concepts like this, but at face value we think this is actually rather cool. For starters, while it may look like a space age loaf of bread, the wheels and lights can change colour and display interesting patterns. But it's on the inside where the Urbanaut really shines. Open the sliding door and you're greeted by the sort of space usually found in architects' digital portfolios, with a frameless circular screen that doubles as a lamp and some very stylish modern furniture. There is a dashboard of sorts, but the steering wheel can fold away for autonomous driving, allowing the front occupants to swivel around and relax with the people in the back and enjoy the different atmosphere modes that Mini calls moments. The Gen Z occupants can choose between chill, vibe and wanderlust, each bathing the cabin with mood lighting and different fragrances. The Vision Urbanaut is undeniably a fun thing, but something that is a long, long way from ever even being considered for production. The Mercedes GLS is among the biggest and most luxurious SUVs on the market. It essentially takes all the beautiful materials and cutting-edge tech from the S-Class and wraps them all up in a vast seven-seat 4x4. This one, though, is the Maybach version, and it turns everything up to 11. Aimed squarely at the Rolls-Royce Cullinan and the Bentley Bentayga, it's quite simply the most opulent Mercedes you can buy. And its release comes as no real surprise. After all, the Bentayga and Cullinan are both selling well, while one in seven S-Classes sold is a Maybach. So what marks the Mercedes Maybach GLS apart from the standard car? Well, to give it the signature Maybach look, Mercedes has ditched the standard radiator grille in favour of a shinier one. The front bumper's been redesigned too, with yet more chrome, while the rear bumper gets a similar treatment. In fact, there's chrome just about everywhere, around the windows, on the skid plates, and it even gets chrome roof rails. 22-inch wheels come as standard, with the option to upgrade to these mammoth 23s. It also gets a range of exclusive paint jobs, including various two-tone combinations, but we just go for black to maximise the car's menacing presence. But it's inside the cabin where you'll notice the biggest differences between this and a regular GLS. The standard car is not exactly Spartan, but the Maybach is on a whole other level. It all starts when you open the door handle to get in. The car lowers itself by 25mm, while a 2 meter long chrome running board folds out from behind the sill. And it isn't like watching an old Range Rover on air suspension slowly lowering itself. The whole process happens in just a second. After all, time is money, and while the price hasn't yet been revealed, we'll take a punt and say it will be quite high. In the front it all looks fairly familiar, there's the enormous Mercedes infotainment system, albeit with Maybach graphics, and the same dashboard from the normal GLS, just with fancier wood and leather. We think it's in the back though where most Maybach customers will find themselves. The Bentley and Rolls might be targeted at drivers, but the Maybach seems like a car to be chauffeured in. It's available with either a three-seat rear bench or two incredible reclining massage chairs looking like they've been lifted straight from the Emirates First Class cabin. They're endlessly adjustable and are separated by an enormous centre console featuring a climate control panel, two folding tables and an optional champagne cooler with a pair of silver flutes. The entire cabin is trimmed in the finest Napa leather, while all the wood has been carefully aged for 10 years. What a relief. It also gets an astounding 27-speaker Burmester sound system, which is enhanced by the partition between the passengers and the boot. Other highlights include the standard tilting panoramic roof and the 64-colour customizable ambient lighting system, which lets you bathe the cabin in the perfect colour to suit your mood. 
Speaking of which, Mercedes has tried to give the Maybach GLS its own unique atmosphere with a special smell. According to Mercedes, it has its own signature fragrance. The white as Manthus blossom, floral and light is rounded off by a gentle leather note and spicy tea. Right. The way this thing drives is perhaps the least important thing about it, but you'll be pleased to hear that Mercedes hasn't skimped by giving it a diesel. Oh no, it gets a reworked version of the 4-litre by Turbo V8 found in the AMG GT, developing 550 brake horsepower. Drive goes through a 9-speed box, while a 48-volt mild hybrid system helps to fill in the gaps and save fuel. 0 to 62 miles per hour takes a barely believable 4.9 seconds onto a limited top speed of 155 miles per hour. We know the Mercedes Maybach GLS won't be to everyone's taste. It's vulgar, extravagant, and really quite bling. But it's not every day a new car is released with a champagne cooler in the back, and for that, we can't help but admire it. After the break, Audi's new EV plus an affordable saloon car from Toyota. Coming up, the all new Audi e-tron GT, but first. Here in Europe, the cheap saloon car is all but extinct. Even slightly bigger cars like the Volkswagen Passat and Peugeot 508 are now rather rare sights on the roads, with the majority of four-door cars being built by the likes of BMW and Mercedes. Instead, the hatchback is still the most popular type of car continuing to fend off the SUV offensive. Over in the States though, the saloon, or rather sedan, is still king. Cars like this, the 2021 Toyota Corolla. And while that name may be familiar, this isn't the same family hatchback that we get in Europe. Instead, the liftback has been replaced by a traditional boot lid. Recently redesigned, following on from the new hatchback version, the Corolla has inherited some tech from the bigger Prius. As a result, the Corolla is finally offered with a hybrid powertrain, essential for keeping up with its rivals. Entry-level cars use a 1.8-litre four-cylinder and a rather noisy CVT gearbox for a total output of 139 horsepower. But while it won't win many drag races, the Corolla still offers a huge amount of bang for your buck, as what it lacks in performance it more than makes up for in equipment. There are loads of different trim levels to choose from, but even the most basic cars get a mobile hotspot, touchscreen infotainment and Apple CarPlay, although Android Auto is conspicuously absent. It does get Amazon Alexa though, helping you to keep your eyes on the road and not on the screen. Top trim levels get various other luxuries like leather and fancy audio systems, but all cars come with numerous bits of safety tech like lane keep assist and autonomous emergency braking. But despite being one of the world's best-selling cars for years now, it doesn't have the market to itself. Far from it. The new 2021 Hyundai Elantra is another US market sedan with a fresh new look. The old model had little in the way of curb appeal, but the new car looks much more interesting. With its angular design and on-trend big grille, it certainly stands out against the more subdued Toyota. In fact, from any angle, it looks like a much more premium product, despite costing about the same as the Corolla with a base price of a little over $20,000. Like the Toyota, the Elantra is now available as a hybrid with a 43 horsepower electric motor paired up to a 1.6 liter engine. The total output is identical to the Toyota's at 139 horsepower. The interior, though, is a little more upmarket, with optional digital driver's displays and a minimalist look. 
However, there is a third option for those after a compact hybrid sedan, the Honda Civic. Another car that's usually found as a hatchback in Europe, the Civic is most commonly seen as a four-door rather than a five in America. Like the Toyota and Hyundai, it's available with a range of engines and trim levels. But the hybrid option once again makes use of a CVT gearbox, but it's a more refined option than those found in its rivals. Opt for the 2-litre version and you can spec a superb 6-speed manual too, making the Civic the best choice for keen drivers with excellent handling throughout the range. There are countless other choices in this class, but these three represent the best blend of practicality, style and value. But choosing between them is tricky. For us though, it's the Hyundai that just edges it, thanks to its striking looks and modern interior. It's just as well equipped as the Toyota and just a bit more up to date than the Honda Civic. And while there is only still a very small market for cars like this in Europe, it's the Elantra that we'd most like to see make its way over here. While electric cars have been with us for a while now, few have really felt like true sports cars. Sure, there are plenty of fast EVs out there that will pin you to the back of your seat, but generally speaking, the weight of all those batteries has meant they never really feel quite as impressive in the corners. So when Porsche revealed the Taycan in 2019, it seemed like a breath of fresh air. Finally, petrol heads could start to get excited about EVs, and now the Taycan has a sister car. Meet the Audi e-tron GT, an all-electric four-door saloon based on the Taycan's architecture. A rival to the likes of the Tesla Model S and Mercedes EQS, it's a big luxury saloon with impressive range and even better performance. Prices start at a smidge over £79,000 and for that you get a 298 mile range and two electric motors sending 469 brake horsepower to all four wheels. 0-62 mph is dealt with in 4.1 seconds with a top speed of 152. From a stylish perspective, the Taycan underpinnings are clear. The Ingolstadt designers have done a good job of making it look like an Audi, but the Porsche's footprint remains. In fact, the e-tron GT shares 40% of its parts with the Taycan. The e-tron, though, is set up a little differently. Where the Porsche is tuned predominantly for performance and driving pleasure, the Audi is softer and more comfortable for those who want a big, comfy wafter that, every now and again, can adjust the positions of your internal organs when you put your foot down. The cabin is as beautifully trimmed as you'd expect from an 80 grand Audi. It isn't quite as ultra-modern as the exterior, but it isn't at all disappointing. Naturally, it gets some big screens with a virtual cockpit display in front of the driver and a 10-inch infotainment screen in the middle of the dash. There's no third screen for the climate control and aircon, instead just some good old-fashioned easy-to-use buttons. Being an electric car, the e-tron GT has one eye on the environment. It's available with a variety of vegan upholsteries and ethically sourced recycled wood trims. This, though, isn't the only version of Audi's electric four-door. This is the Audi RS e-tron GT and, as the name suggests, it's a harder, faster and altogether more exciting car. Like the regular GT, the RS has two electric motors, one at the front and one at the back. Here though, they are tuned to produce a combined output of 590 brake horsepower, 
The front motor drives a single gear transmission, while the more powerful rear motor drives a twin-speed gearbox with an electronic differential to keep all that power in check. However, this being an electric car, it is on the heavy side. It may only be about the size of an A6, but it weighs a remarkable 2,347 kilograms. Nevertheless, the RS e-tron will still sprint from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds, and you can even get that down to 3.3 if you select the dynamic mode to activate the overboost function. This extra performance does come at a price though. Prices for the RS start at £110,000 and it isn't just your wallet that will take a hit. The range is down versus the standard car as well, although only by 16 miles or so. That sort of money puts it in the same sort of big money price range as the faster, prettier and arguably more desirable Porsche Taycan Turbo. We like the Audi e-tron GT, but we can't help but think it will always sit in the shadow of a Stuttgart sibling. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out Bentley's new hybrid, Flying Spur.